Let's bring in Evan Solomon, the host of CTV's Power Play Question Period, standing by in Ottawa. What do you think, Evan? Well, this was a healthy dose of some principles and some politics and a nice recipe for the leader of the Bloc Quebecois. Let's just talk about the principle. He's not wrong that there's a lot of questions left to be asked, and Justin Trudeau has, hasn't answered them. Sorry doesn't cover it. The Band-Aid does not stop the political bleeding for him, for Bill Morneau, or for the party. And there's genuine principled questions about this program, the $912 million that originally was for the WE charity to administer this jobs program. And I just got off the phone with Charlie Angus, the NDP critic, and they would agree. How did that program get set? Who really decided that WE Charity could be the sole source contract? Where was the money going to be spent? Why didn't Justin Trudeau recuse himself knowing his mother, his brother, and his wife had all been paid? Why did nobody in cabinet, whose function is the challenge function, raise that issue? It's not like this was hidden. Everybody knew that Sophie Gregoire Trudeau was running a podcast for them or that they had a very close ties to the Trudeaus. Why did Bill Morneau not recuse himself when his daughter works there? There's a lot of questions that maybe Mr. Trudeau will answer or Mr. Morneau if they actually decide to go to the finance committee. They've been asked to go under oath. And by the way, they're not ruling that out. But this was a mess. And so there's genuine principled questions that Mr. Blanchet is raising. But then he gets into the politics. And this is just absolutely the chaos sowing, sowing the seeds of disunity in the Liberal Party by saying, step aside, Justin Trudeau, for what could be seven months of an ethics commissioner investigation and let Christian Freeland, the deputy prime minister, take over. What Blanchette's doing there is trying to sow disunity inside the Liberal Party, knowing Trudeau won't do that, trying to make a competition between Freeland and Trudeau. He'd like to weaken the Liberals so when there's election, and it's a minority government, so there's going to be an election within the year probably, Todd, he wants the Liberals to be disunited. He's trying to uh, bleed confidence away from brand Trudeau because the bloc will be fighting for Trudeau in Quebec for seats, and he's saying that he's burnt, and he'd much rather have Christian Freeland, who's not very well known in Quebec, than running against brand Trudeau. So this was a real mix of politics and principle from a very clever politician. You know, Evan, on this program yesterday, I had the opportunity to interview Bartish Chugger, who is the Trudeau government's Minister for Diversity, Inclusion and Youth, and I know you've interviewed her as well. And time and again, I kept asking, why did nobody see uh, any problem with this? Why did this not send up red flags? Why did nobody raise the fact of the family ties and uh, Bill Morneau's ties, Justin Trudeau's ties? I mean, I didn't really get you know, a, a very coherent answer as to why this wasn't, uh, you know, discussed around the table and nobody sort of put up their hand and said, mm, maybe we shouldn't do this. I'm curious how you see this now kind of playing out. Well, first, let me just comment. I watched your interview, Todd. It was a great interview. Um, and it was like you were trying to, you know, scoop a, a cup of water with your hand and put it in your <laughs> fist. Every time you close your fist, it just escaped. I mean, she was spinning. There was literally no answer there. I watched that entire interview. Look, I want people to understand this because this is the cabinet table's job is a challenge function. The idea that the liberals have said that the bureaucracy just sort of says, here's the program, sole source this to the we, and then they just ask no questions. They do it robotically, like, well, if the bureaucrats say that, we'll do it. That's not how it works. There's usually a suggestion by the, bureauc the bureaucracy. They put it forward and cabinet then, and look who's around the table. Bill Morneau, the finance minister, this is close to a billion dollars. Let's make sure it's right. The prime minister, Bartish Chagger, the minister, the chief of staff, Katie Telford, the deputy prime minister, whose job it is to watch out for the prime minister, the clerk of the Privy Council. That's seven people whose job it is to make sure that the program, if it indeed was suggested by the bureaucracy, is done right. At that moment, they could recuse themselves. Someone could say, hey, boss, that's what they call Justin Trudeau. Hey, boss, get out of the room. You're too close to this. You can't have anything. Hey, Mr. Morneau, you got to get out of the room. You cannot have anything to do with this. Bartis Chegger telling you, you know, I didn't ask anything, is you, you, it's either side's bad for them. Either they're incompetent because they didn't do due diligence on close to a billion dollars, or they're negligent. And these are two terrible options, which is why Bartis Chegger said, you know, it was very important that we, um, you know, try to get help for kids. Look, the public service has been 
absolutely phenomenal, delivering programs like the CERB and the wage subsidy and backing uh, the bus over public servants for this boondoggle is not going to work. And maybe that comes out at the finance committee. I don't know. My sources have told me that the, the, the finance minister and the prime minister may indeed join at the finance committee and they may even do it under oath. They're not ruling that out. And I think that would go a long way to getting some transparency. And if we indeed find out that it was a suggestion by the bureaucracy and they just forgot to recuse themselves, we'll see what the ethics commissioner says. But it could be worse, Todd, if more documents emerge and we really find out what happened.